Alright everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So recently I've gotten a lot of requests to review Starlight, the mythical material which supposedly can withstand insane levels of fire stress. This is probably because Nighthawk in Light, another YouTube channel, which I highly recommend, link down in the description, has shown the process in which he has produced a sample which we believe to be very close, if not exactly the same as Starlight. The usual demonstration is to take a thin sample and place it in your hand or near something that is heat sensitive and blast it with a torch. Now that's pretty impressive, right? Well, I've got a problem with that demonstration. You see, it's just not that powerful, really. Uh, the flame that it produces is pretty spread out, it doesn't even get that hot, and it's a reducing flame. If you had a neutral or oxidizing flame, something that's made out of flammable materials might not handle quite as well. And in fact, I can do the blowtorch test with a lot of things. In this case, a piece of stale bread. And it does it just as well, because well, it's made of almost the same stuff. Minus probably a lot of sodium. Future Cody here. So after I'd got done filming this video, I was made aware of some other YouTubers who had posted demonstrations showing thermite reacting in a starlight crucible, and this was rather interesting. But if you've ever done a thermite reaction, you know, have a pile of thermite sitting on top of something, you'll know that thermite actually isn't all that good at burning through things. So then, what would Cody propose as a more severe test? Well, let's start with an oxyacetylene torch. These things produce way more concentrated heat. And, if I so choose, I can add oxygen to the flame. So let's go blast the starlight with this. So this is the setup. I've just got it clamped into a ring stand. And I'm going to take the torch and hit it this way. Yeah, it looks like the uh, material is burning through. This is just with the uh, neutral flame. Let's see what happens if I add some oxygen. Things hold up reasonably well but I'm still burning through it relatively rapidly. Like it'd take me longer to cut through a piece of stainless steel. There it is. One thing I'll give it, it's already cold enough for me to pick up and touch. Let's try the starlight again, but this time with a much thicker piece. A thicker piece of starlight. Seems to burn through just as fast, just with the normal flame. And it seems to want to hollow out on the inside. It's kind of interesting. So that didn't take substantially longer. The piece is maybe, you know, 
four or five times thicker, but it didn't take five times longer to cut. Look at all this vaporized sodium carbonate that's in the air. Well, that is one thing that I find good about Starlight, is that it's non-toxic and even its combustion products are non, not all that harmful. I should probably open a window. Now that I've cleared the air, is Starlight this magical material that can withstand 10,000 degrees Celsius? I would say no. And in fact, if you think about it, there are no chemical bonds that can withstand 10,000 degrees. The best you can hope for is it creates some kind of vapor plasma shield that actually keeps it cooler than that. Which Starlight might actually do, but I have no way of testing it. One thing I can say, though, is it's probably not going to be able to survive atmospheric entry. Uh, the oxygen-rich atmosphere we have here on Earth would just burn right through all the carbon. In fact, uh, cutting through this material felt a lot like cutting through stainless steel. If I heat it up for a long time, the material melts and forms the carbon barrier, which is actually pretty resistant, but if I blast it with the oxygen from the torch, that gets blown away and more material just melts off. So considering that it's pretty lightweight, yeah, Starlight is a pretty cool material, but it does have some downsides. One is that it's not particularly strong. It seems to absorb moisture from the air, which increases its thermal conductivity and I might see mold or something growing on it, but of course you can probably put chemicals in there to stop bacterial and fungal growth. But then of course that would make it toxic. So I think it's a pretty cool material, but it's way overhyped. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Let's try cutting through a piece of plasterboard. And there we are. I was able to cut through it. It kept forming like little spots that I actually couldn't melt. And they wouldn't blow away very easily. <laughs>